Hello, welcome to the presentation, How to Be a Good Online Doctor. I'm Ron Harmon King of Vanguard Communications, and I'm coming to you from the great outdoors of the Rocky Mountains in Colorado in the United States. I'm outside today on a beautiful late summer day, so you'll probably hear some wind blowing, maybe some birds chirping, perhaps even a dog or two barking. It's all part, I hope, of the color of this presentation. So today we're going to talk about why you should try to be a doctor online and tips to succeeding in being one. First, a little bit about who we are. We're basically an internet publishing and marketing firm, and we guarantee what we do will bring new patients to our clients throughout the U.S. and Canada. We work with specialty medical practices in academic and private practice. We've worked in 18 specialties, but we began in IVF back in the 1990s. 26 years in business in the U.S. and Canada. We're basically digital content marketers, and I'll explain what that means in just a little bit. We also have a medical doctor on staff, Dr. Neil Baum, who helps us keep on track both scientifically and clinically. That's who we are. Today's presenters are myself, I'm the founder and CEO of Vanguard Communications, and Stephanie Wilson, who will come in for the second half of this presentation, Stephanie is the vice president of the company. In our agenda today, we're going to talk about why reproductive endocrinologists and infertility specialists should be online, how the healthcare profession has changed since the introduction of the internet some 20 years ago, and lastly, Stephanie is going to talk to you about using the internet to stand out, which is very important today to healthcare consumers and patients. First, why being online matters in reproductive endocrinology and infertility. Let's talk for a moment about that word online. What does it mean? Well, it generally refers to the internet. The internet has several pieces. We all use email these days. That's one of the big ones. Social media is very popular the world over. It's an internet platform. And by this, of course, I mean Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, WhatsApp, and so on. We also have the Internet of Things. This is a connection of devices and appliances that are connected through the Internet so that we can control things like our home or office temperature, our appliances, lights, and so on from another location outside the home or office. And then we have the World Wide Web, which is where websites are. And we're going to spend a lot of time talking about websites. First, though, let's look at the popularity of the Internet. If you look at this map, you'll see anywhere there's dark blue, that generally means more than half of the residents of that area of the world have access to the Internet. As you can see, most of the world does have that access on a percentage, 50 percentage basis. Quite a few countries have less than 50 percent access to their citizens to the Internet, but as you can see, there are almost no countries that have no Internet access. So the internet is everywhere. How did we live without it? 3.6 billion internet users now live on this planet worldwide. That's about half the population. If you go to the Google search engine, you're not going to be alone. Every second, 40,000 people are searching on Google. Every second. That's 3.5 billion searches a day or 1.2 trillion searches a year, huge volumes. If you look at the countries with the leading indexes of internet access, you'll see some surprises here. First of all, Iceland is number one, followed closely by Bermuda, of all places. And then we have quite a few countries in Europe and North America who are also big internet users with plenty of access to their citizens, but we also have quite a few countries in Asia and South America and elsewhere that are not far behind in percentage of residents with internet access. The beauty of the internet is that it can bring the world to your door no matter where you are. If you have a website you can reach virtually anywhere on the planet. This is the website of one of our clients, Tennessee Reproductive Medicine, based in Chattanooga, Tennessee, USA. It's not a big practice, two physicians, in a medium-sized city, and yet, interestingly, they have one of the most active websites of anyone we work with. 
In one month, they received over 21,000 visitors from 156 nations. Keep in mind, there's only 193 nations on Earth. So in one month, this one website received visits from someone in three-fourths of all the countries on Earth. This is what I call the healthcare revolution. In much of the world today, almost nobody is not online. And the fastest growing group of users are people older than 65 and in low income brackets. And interestingly, six in 10 people use the internet wirelessly. And a huge number of people are increasingly using it on their mobile phone. These little pocket devices, which you see all over the world. When I was in Nepal a few years ago, I was shocked at how many people did not have electricity in their homes, but how many of those non-electrified homes had residents with smartphones and internet access. Social media has become part of regular internet usage. Nearly two in three of the adults living in Western European countries use social media at least once a month. They are visiting on, on Facebook, on Twitter, WhatsApp, and so on in quite large numbers, the majority. Also, it may be surprising to you that there's virtually no gender gap in social media usage. Men use it almost as much as women. As part of the social media explosion, one of the big phenomenon over the last five to 10 years in the United States, I believe is now spreading worldwide. And that is the ability to rate your doctor and your healthcare experience on the internet, typically through either social media or on special websites dedicated to that. Today, about half of all Americans, 150 million or more, use these reviews. They read them for information on healthcare decisions, whereas a quarter of all Americans actually write the reviews, and 68% or two-thirds of Americans have read the reviews and use them to make healthcare decisions. So as you can see, the internet changed healthcare communications radically. Healthcare communications used to be a matter of one-to-one -one communications. Today, it's a matter of one-to-many communications. If you have internet access, you can talk to almost anyone worldwide through the wonders of Web 2.0, which allow two-way communications, really multi-distant, multi-directional, and multi-party communications. And this is why healthcare has now become a global conversation. I'm going to turn it over now to my colleague, Stephanie Wilson, who will talk to you about using the internet to stand apart. Thanks, Ron. So now that we've seen that your patients and future patients are online using the internet to find information, I'm going to talk about how to harness that online activity to attract patients to your medical practice and how to stand out among all the other healthcare providers and organizations online that are vying for their attention. Now, namely, that means emphasizing their needs over simply highlighting your skills. So in order to do that, it's critical to understand what fertility patients are looking for online, and that's health information first, healthcare providers second. So patients look for information about health conditions, treatment options, and so on before looking for a doctor. Now, how do we know that? At Vanguard, we use research tools like Google Keyword Planner to see how frequently patients search online for certain terms and topics. For example, the term fertility, people are searching for that term 74,000 times a month on average in the US. The term conception, 60,000 times. Infertility, 49,000 times on average per month. Now let's compare that to how much they search for terms about healthcare providers. For example, fertility clinic is searched 27,000 times per month. IVF doctor, a mere 480 times per month. Here's another example for specific infertility related conditions for which we see a very high number of searches. Example, the term PCOS is searched 450,000 times on average on Google per month. Miscarriage, 165,000 times. Fallopian tubes, 40,000 times. So yes, we do see that patients search for information about their health first and provider second. And in fact, using this kind of search data, we see the takeaway is that patients look for health info more than 10 times as often as healthcare providers. 
and we find what patients actually read on a fertility practices website matches those search trends, with top read pages being patient friendly blogs, pages about health conditions or treatments, and other information about how to get pregnant. What this means for you as a healthcare provider is that search services like Google are one of the best ways to bring in new patients. And we've seen with practices that we work with is that Google can bring in as many as three out of four new patients. And that's really through the quality of information, not just quantity. Now, when I say quality of information on your website, um, I'm talking about SEO or search engine optimization. You'll often hear about SEO from website managers and marketers, and it's often mysticized, but it's really not some sort of website or tech magic. It's really about that quality information that we've been talking about, meaning you provide information on your website that patients are already looking for. Here's an example health page discussing the details of infertility in women. This kind of content is a great way to show up in Google and bring in patients looking for this type of information. You can see in this example, too, that the website also has pages on topics like endometriosis, diminished ovarian reserve, and PCOS. You'll want similar health pages on treatment options, too, such as, of course, IVF, but even pages on recommended treatment approaches, for example, single embryo transfer. In these informative pages, you'll also want to use patient-friendly language. Here's some examples of terms that could be simplified for your patients. Reproductive endocrinologist, fertility doctor, oocyte, you can use egg. Zona pellicida of the embryo could be outer shell of the embryo. Microsurgical tubal reanastomosis, tubal sterilization reversal, or reversing getting your tubes tied. Even something simple like anovulation could further be simplified such as not ovulating. Now in general, you wanna focus your online internet communication on patient first language. And this extends to messaging and other information you have on your website. Even if it's about your practice, it should really be about the patient. Let's look at some examples. Your baby, your way. This message emphasizes the patient benefit of treatment at this practice. Our family devoted to yours speaks to and evokes that emotional side of infertility and the patient's goal of having a family. Success made simple. Talking about IVF success here, but in a very appealing way to patients who might be daunted by the fertility process. So again, you want to lead with the patient first, not the practice first. Here's some examples of common messaging on fertility websites. This practice, for example, leads with why us and top doctors. This is important to the patient, but shifts the focus away from the patient and what they want to the practice or who they are. In this next example, the practice emphasizes expertise or the time in business. Again, great details, but patients often start with the assumption their doctors will have expertise. But what other benefits can the patient expect from this practice? Another great way to speak to a patient's needs is to make a personal connection. Positioning a physician not just as the expert on paper, but also showing the physician is a real human that will care about their patients. It's a great way to meet patients on their level. For example, on this doctor's page, he talks about his personal approach to treatment and gives patients a way to connect with him through online reviews. Another doctor includes a testimonial from one of her patients to demonstrate her patient care. These doctors use video and social media to share their personal stories for why they became doctors and what drew them to helping infertility patients. This doctor shows his personal side by showing a very casual video about dealing with the coronavirus pandemic while getting exercise outside. Now, this video isn't even about infertility specifically, but his fertility patients really appreciated seeing his personal side here. Finally, another critical step for reaching patients on the internet is joining in those online conversations that patients are already having. This term, find us online, isn't just your website. You need to be present where the patients are present. Social media is a major way to connect with patients on the internet. Now that's defined as an interactive online platform or online community where patients can share information, photos, videos, and ideas, and interact with similar information from other people, groups, and businesses. Some examples of social media platforms include Facebook, Pinterest, 
Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Skyrock. Review websites are another great way to reach and engage patients too. This includes online sites where patients can rate and provide comments about their doctors. And it's important that medical practices and providers monitor these reviews and respond both to the positive and the negative feedback. By the way, you can learn more about social media in another presentation that we're working on for IVF Worldwide titled, What IVF Specialists Should and Should Not Share on Social Media. So to recap, how to stand out online. You wanna have a presence on multiple channels such as a website, social media, and online reviews. You want to have patient-focused language and content, especially that health information that patients are searching for. You want to get personal and make sure you join the conversation. Thank you for watching our presentation. You can find additional information about being a good online doctor by reading Ron's book titled The Totally Wired Doctor, available on Amazon.com. You can also find additional free practice resources for online communications on our website at vanguardcommunications.net forward slash IVF worldwide.